get your ears prompt and ready to go, I want to challenge you to go to this next place with me. And thank you guys so much for loving Taffy and I, for participating in the times of confessions in the morning, the times of prayer, the times of giving, the times of doing what you can to serve other people, volunteering as we continue to reach out with people. It's a blessing of the Lord. I want to remind you and over and over and over again, I'm standing in the building preaching to the church. You're the church. You're the church. I'm standing in the building where the church gathers, but you are the church. And I pray today will not only give you understanding of God's Word, but it's one of those messages I may have to teach again once the church comes back into the building because this is something that got my attention. It, it, it caught me uh, a little off guard because I was like, Lord, that, I don't want that to be me. And so if you have your Bibles, let's begin this morning. Go with me to the book of Proverbs chapter 1. Proverbs chapter 1 and verse 32 in the New Living Translation. And this morning, I want to I wanna teach, and I may get excited. I, I, I hope I can stay calm so I can translate this information to you properly so that your life can be changed and challenged. Uh, Proverbs chapter 1, verse 32. I'm going to teach you on... Uh, I call this the destructive power of complacency. The, the destructive power of complacency. Now, some may, may not even be able to grab hold of what that is, and, and I'm going to show it to you in a moment, but I, I think what really got my attention is by not being aware of this, this could be something that could cause destruction in my life as a Christian, in your life as a Christian, and it has already caused destruction in lives of people who, who just have no idea what it is and, and how it can destroy. But one of the greatest dangers in the Christian life is complacency. One of the greatest dangers in the Christian life is complacency. Well, what is it? Let's define it. Let's spend the next five or ten minutes and work on what, what it is so I can make sure that each of you can get a hold of this. Complacency, it is a feeling of calm, calm satisfaction. A feeling of calm satisfaction with your own abilities or your own situation. So there's this feeling of, of calm satisfaction with my ability, of calm satisfaction with my situation, that prevents you from trying harder. In other words, you're so satisfied about your situation, you, uh, you, you, won't, you won't try harder. You, you're, you're so satisfied with your situation, you're not motivated to, to, to keep moving or, or going to the next level. It's a feeling of calm satisfaction with your own abilities or situation that prevents you from trying harder. Now, the first thing I think about, this can easily be confused with contention or, or contentment. So I want to compare contentment with, with uh, complacency just for a moment. Contentment is about being satisfied and at ease while you're improving and getting better and progressing to the next level. So contentment is about, okay, I'm satisfied but at the same time, while I'm satisfied, I continue to improve, I continue to, to get better, I continue to make progress to the next level. So you can be satisfied with a 500 square foot house, but you're continuing to get better, continuing to improve, continuing to work harder to go to that next level. So that's what it means. It means to be satisfied while you're in, while you're in the process of be, making more progress and getting better. It's about having, contentment is about having a good attitude about where you are while knowing you are on your way to another place or another. Uh, 1 Timothy chapter 6, verse 6 and 8 says this, and it talks about contentment. He says, but godliness with contentment 
is great gain. But godliness with contentment is great gain. And then in uh, verse 8, he says, And having food and raiment, let us be therefore content. So he says, you know, uh, godliness with contentment equals great gain. But he says, okay, so even which, when you just have food and when you just have clothes, learn how to be content. Learn how to be satisfied. You're not going to be there. You're just, you're just passing through that point. You're not going to stay there all your life because you're going to continue to work hard at achieving the next level. So godliness grows through the presence of the person of Jesus Christ. Now, complacency, on the other hand, it means refusing to work to improve. Complacency, on the other hand, is I refuse to work. I'm so satisfied with where I am, I refuse to work to improve. Complacency has, has, has decided to carry this slogan, it's good enough. It's good enough. And if that's your slogan, if you find yourself saying, well, it's good enough, I don't need to, um, you know, go any farther. I don't need to work any harder. It's good enough. As soon as you take hold of that slogan, you have decided to go down the path of complacency. Because if you're satisfied with how everything is and it's just good enough and everything's just cool and there's no need of me working any harder, there's no need of me going after anything any other way, then you have gone down, you have proceeded to go down the path of complacency because it's you're so satisfied with it being good enough you're so calm with uh, uh, uh with your abilities you're so calm and satisfied with your situation that you say well i don't need to try harder this is good enough it, as if that's all the good that god has to to offer your life and i'm telling you that's that's not that's not it at all now let's look at christian contentment versus christian complacency how does this now deal with our lives as Christian people? Well, first of all, Christian contentment means that no matter what happens, you are fully satisfied in Jesus. So Christian contentment, no matter what happens, regardless of what happens, I am fully satisfied in Jesus. But Christian complacency, it means that no matter what happens, you are fully self-satisfied with your current personal effort in pursuing Christ. It's enough, or, or it's good enough. So Christian complacency, where you, when you look at Christian contention, you're talking about that no matter what happens, you're fully satisfied in talking about that no matter what happens, you're fully satisfied in Jesus, and you're believing in Jesus to take you to the next place. But Christian complacency says that no matter what happens, you're fully self-satisfied. So the satisfaction is self-satisfaction with your current personal effort in your pursuing with Christ. I'm satisfied with who I am in Christ. I'm satisfied with the revelation I have in Christ. I'm satisfied with, you know, my, 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 my worship with Christ. I, I don't need to grow anymore than what I'm growing. I don't need to pray anymore than what I'm praying. I don't need to listen to any more word. I, I have self-satisfaction in my current personal effort in pursuing Christ. It's good enough. My Christian life, it's good enough. It's fine. See, you're now in complacency. Therefore, to put all this together, let's now see how we would define complacency for this teaching today. Complacency, complacency then, is a feeling of being satisfied with how things are and not wanting to try to make them better. It's self-satisfaction, especially when accompanied by unawareness of actual dangers and deficiencies. I'm telling you right now, this is a trick of the enemy. Feelings of being satisfied with how things are. Are you satisfied with how things are? Feelings of not wanting to try to make them better. Are you in that place where it's all right in your mind, it's just good enough. I don't need to make it better. I'm pretty satisfied with where things are right now. And then you find yourself that you are not even aware of the actual dangers and deficiencies 
because of this complacency, you, you're not even aware of what it's doing to your life. And I'm telling you, complacency is a dangerous position. It is a dangerous posture for a Christian person. It is out to attack your growth in Christ. In other words, you only go so high, you only grow so much until all of a sudden you're just satisfied with where you are. So complacency is both destructive and dangerous. Complacency is a deadly enemy to your Christian growth. You know, we know, we know about God that he is so big and he's so high and he's so wide and he's so deep. Do you actually think that you bankrupt heaven? Do you actually think that what you have is all that God wants to do? Do you actually think that the growth that you've experienced so far is all of the growth that God wants you to experience? Absolutely not. And I tell you, that has been the reason that a lot of ministries don't exist anymore. A, a, a lot of, a lot of uh, worship leaders don't exist anymore. A, a, a lot of people who reach a certain point and say, well, you know, I'm pretty satisfied. And, and, and there, was, there was more. There was more. There was more to achieve, praise God. So now let's get into this and, and uh, uh, let's show you some scriptures according to the word. And let's continue to dig deeper into this. Paul gave us a warning about complacency. And I never realized this until this word really got on the inside of my spirit. Let, go to, with me to the book of Philippians chapter 3. Philippians chapter 3, verse 12. And I want to read verse 12 through, through uh, 21. I always use this as a scripture to try to encourage people. But I want you to notice in context what Paul was doing here now. In verse 12, he said, Not as though I had already attained... You see, some Christian people with complacency, they have the attitude that they've already attained. They've already gotten all there is to, to get. Not as though I had already attained, either were already perfect or complete, uh, but I follow after, if that I may apprehend that for which also I am apprehended of Christ Jesus. Verse 13. Brethren, I count not myself to have apprehended, but this one thing I do. Now, watch this. Paul said, here's the one thing I do. I am forgetting those things which are behind. Because somehow people think they look at what's behind and it causes them deep to be complacent and to be satisfied because of the success or the things that they've achieved behind them. And Paul says, you know what? I'm forgetting about the things that are behind so that I can reach forth unto the things which are before. I believe that goes together. He says, sometimes it's the stuff you've accomplished behind you that stops you from reaching to the things that are ahead of you. What are some of the things in your past that's got you anchored to your past when there's so much more in your future? What are some of the things that are behind you the things that you haven't forgotten, therefore you don't, you don't move to try to get to those things that are front. And Paul said, I'm forgetting those things. He, he said, here's the one thing I'm doing. Here's the one thing I'm doing. I'm forgetting the things that are behind me so I can reach forth unto those things that are before me. There's some things before you. You, you hadn't exhausted heaven. Heaven's not bankrupt. I don't know what it is in our minds, as big as God is, no matter what you've achieved, it's not all that he wants to do. And the only thing that can stop you from discovering all that God wants to do, I don't think you'll ever experience in this planet all that God wants to do. And look what he says here. He says, I press towards the mark. I press towards the mark for the prize of the high calling of God in Christ Jesus. After reading verse uh, 13, and I go here 14, he says, I press. Here's how I read it now. He says, I press, I press or else. In other words, it's like either you're going to press towards that mark or you're going to let what's behind you cause you to be complacent. So Paul is encouraging people, come on, press on. That's not it. Press on. Don't be satisfied there. Press on. Don't be complacent there. Press on. And he said, forget about the stuff that's behind. And I just thought, well, let's just forget about the bad stuff that's behind. And true enough, there's some bad things you need to forget about. 
uh, and, and maybe God delivered you from the bad stuff, but there's always so much more in your future that's going to require you to stay away from being uh, complacent so you can press on. It's either it's press on or else. I just see that now, press on or else. And I don't want us to continue to experience the or else, the destruction that comes when you don't press on. And so he goes on and he says, I press towards that mark of the, for the prize of the high calling of God in Christ Jesus. Verse 15, he says, let us therefore as many as be perfect be thus minded that if anything you be otherwise minded, God shall reveal even this unto you. Verse 16, he says, nevertheless, whereto we have already attained, let us walk by the same rule, let us mind the same thing. 17, brethren, be followers together of me and mark them which walk so as you have us for an example. Okay, Paul pressing. For many walk of whom I have told you others, uh, often, excuse me, and now tell you even weeping, he's weeping, that they are the enemies of the cross. Oh, these are ones who became complacent. He says they, they are now the enemies of the cross. And, and look at the description of what they do now because they've become complacent. Verse 19, he says, whose end is destruction. That's what happens when you're complacent. Whose end is destruction, whose God is their belly, whose glory is, is in their shame, and who mine earthly things. Wow. Verse 20. He says, for our conversation, our lifestyle is in heaven, from whence also we look for the Savior, the Lord Jesus Christ. And in verse 21, who shall change our vile bodies, that it may be fashioned like unto his glorious body, according to the working whereby he is able even to subdue all things unto himself. There's more. There's more. You are either, listen to me now, you're either growing in maturity or you're growing to some degree in complacency. But there's no such thing as, I, I'm just standing still right now. You are not standing still. Some people, see, you're either growing one way or you're growing the other way, but you're not just standing still. You're either growing towards the things of God, you're growing and maturing in the things of God, or you're growing in complacency. Look at 2 Peter. I thought this was very interesting. 2 Peter chapter 1. Um, let's look at, look at this in the New Living Translation for a moment. 2 Peter chapter 1 and verse 5 through 10 in the New Living Translation. He says, in view of all of this, Make every effort to respond to God's promises. Supplement your faith with a generous provision of moral excellence and moral excellence with knowledge and knowledge with self-control and self-control with patience, patient endurance, and patient endurance with godliness and godliness with brotherly affection and brotherly affection with love for everyone. Notice he's adding, he's adding, he's adding. He's growing. He's going forth. He keeps adding to it. He keeps growing in the things of God. The more you grow like this, see, they're growing. This is growing towards the things of God. This is maturing in the things of God. The more you grow like this, the more productive and useful you will be in your knowledge of our Lord Jesus Christ. The more you grow like this, the more you grow like this. All right, watch the next verse. But those who fail to develop in this way, those who have come, become complacent, those who fail to develop in this way, those who, who, who fail to press and keep growing, but those who fail to develop in this way, they are short-sighted, they are blind, forgetting that they have been cleansed from their old sins. I mean, they're so complacent, they have forgotten that they have been delivered from their old sins. And look what he says in the next verse. He says, so dear brothers and sisters, Work hard to prove that you really are among those God has called and chosen. Do these things. What things? Keep growing. Keep pressing. Don't become complacent. Those who do these things, you will never 
fall away. You will never fall away. I'm telling you in the name of Jesus, I've made my mind up. I'm going to keep growing. I'm going to keep pressing. I'm not going to allow my successes of my past. I'm not going to allow my failures of my past cause me to become complacent. I'm not going to stop growing in my maturity towards God and begin down the path of complacency. If I continue to press towards my maturity towards God, I will never fall. In other words, if you are a Christian who is complacent with your growth in God, you're in trouble. You are in danger. If you are a Christian who has become complacent in your growth with God and everything's just enough. You don't need to hear no more teachings. You don't need to pray anymore. Hey, I used to pray. You don't need to make no more confessions. You know, you don't need to, you know, let God use you here. You're satisfied with how you're loving. You're satisfied with your patience. You're, if, if that's your attitude, you are in a very dangerous, dangerous position. You see, the problem with complacency is that it causes us to live off of our past victories. It causes us to look at things that we've accomplished in the past and you become complacent. So often we can experience the power of God in our lives and then assume because he acted like that in the past that he'll always do the same in the future. And God has many, many ways of doing what he does. But we're stuck in this is how we did it in the past. And he wants you to move on because he says, I've got some new, I've got some new ways. I've got some things you've never seen before. I've got to show you what I can do in your time and with this situation. I've got to show you how I can take that messy stuff and mix it with the good stuff and make something good out of it. But you, you, you're limiting him. Your complacency is limiting him. And he's like, oh, I've got so much more to give you. I can't because you only expect from me what I've already done. And I'm too big to be stuck with just one way of doing things. God says there's a million ways, a million ways to get you out of debt by the end of the week. And you're limited to one. So we must seek God. We've got to seek God anew every day. If we're to finish the race strong, we got to keep pursuing God. Don't allow the things you've experienced to complete and totally define your Christian relationship with God. It should be an ever-growing relationship. It should be ever-growing in your pursuit of God. It, it should be these, the, the discovery of just a, a new part of God in your relationship and, and where you thought you really loved him because of this one thing, you keep pressing and pursuing him and you realize, oh, look at this, here's another face of God. Here's another piece of goodness of God. You've got to keep pursuing him. You know, God doesn't like complacency. He describes his dislike of complacency, if you would, in Revelation chapter 3 and verse 15 and 16. He, he doesn't love complacency. Uh, verse 15 says, I know thy works, that thou art neither cold nor hot. He says, I, he says, I, I would that you were cold or hot. But watch this. So then, because thou art lukewarm, you're, you're, not a, you're not cold, you're not hot, you're lukewarm. That's complacency. You're neither cold nor hot. He says, here's what I do with the lukewarm. I spew thee out of my mouth. In other words, you make me vomit. I have so much more to do, and you're satisfied with being lukewarm. You're satisfied with just what you've understood and what you know and what you've experienced.